Age Signs – How to Tell the Rarity of Antique Porcelain Products They say that, in order to get the best and the priciest antique porcelain product in the market, what you need to do, is to select the oldest, and you get the best. This is a good move for someone who knows his porcelain subject, but this could be difficult for someone who has a limited background in these products. So what can be done, so that you will not left out and to avoid being given the wrong porcelain? One important that you should acquire, is the skill, that can help you tell the age characteristics of porcelain. The recognizable age signs of the porcelain, will tell you, if the product, that is given to you is the real one, or something that has just been manufactured last year, one thing to remember first. Take note that even the age signs can be faked as well so make sure, that you are prepared the right way. In noting the age of these products there are two basic rules, that can be considered. One is that, if the piece has no visible age signs, then you can take that piece as newly made. And second, if the piece is full of age signs, and telling you to look at it as an antique then better reconsider as the piece may not be antique at all. Other than these, there are signs, that you should know that can help you in your assessment. Here are those age signs worth noting. I check the discoloration on the piece. Pieces with glaze and decorations will not get discolored, except for articles, that are in display for a long period of time. I another age sign is the crackle, and the discolored crackles, that can be seen on porcelain pieces are indicative of the old age of the products. Just be careful in assessing these products with crackles since the sign can be fake too. What you can do, when shopping is to check the authenticity of the crackles on the porcelain. I rust spots can be considered too as a sign of age. Rust spots are often small in porcelain, and these are formed as a result of the movement of the iron residue into the surface. Eye glaze contractions can be used as signs for age, or the authenticity of the porcelain pieces. For genuine pieces with glaze contractions, these contractions are made due to the kiln conditions during the time of production could even be a century ago. But again this is not a reliable indication for the age, so make sure, that you use this, in determining the kiln conditions, and during that time, and not necessarily the age. You'll use is the small spots with holes or recesses. The ones discussed, can be used in telling the authenticity of porcelain pieces. The best way is to make use of a combination of these signs, when assessing products to determine best which porcelain products are genuine, or not and to check, if they are antique or not. Antique Porcelain Know How to Take Care of Your Collection Come to think of it, antique collection is such a fascinating hobby for many people. Most of them really have to travel far and wide, just to get their hands on the best pieces. They even care less about the amount of money, that they get to spend. Antique porcelains are among the collectibles, that collectors love spending on and keeping safe. They see these pieces as worthy investments and they really take time adoring all their collections. But of course, one more important thing, that needs to be learned, is how to take care of such bunch of collections. The antique porcelain is basically held to be important because of its artistic and historical values. Because they usually come in expensive prices, they deserve to be well taken care of. Culturally speaking, these antique pieces are very significant. But then again human negligence along with a couple of natural disasters or accidents, can cause them to get stained or worse, damaged. Because collecting them is such a popular hobby, it matters that you know of the tips on how to make them last longer. When properly done, you can expect them to last longer, that you can even pass them on to your next generation of kin. The first rule in cleaning your antique porcelain is to never put it in a dishwasher. Sometimes you get so tied up with another task, that you want the cleaning procedure to be immediately done. 
But if you have antique porcelain plates, the dishwasher can just image them. You see, its temperature can get too hot, and the prolonged exposure of your antique pieces to this kind of environment can wear them down and cause them to crack. Also, fragile pieces are more prone to chipping and cracking especially when they get all tossed around during the wash cycle. Therefore, wash your antique plates by hand and use only warm water and mild detergent cleaner. Hot water and a very strong detergent can destroy the patterns. Avoid using anything abrasive. Use only a soft cloth. For heavy scrubbing, use the baking soda. Never rub the stains. Instead, create a solution of one part water and two parts peroxide. Use a Q-tip to dab the solution. Professional Porcelain Restoration Alright, so, if you want things done by a professional, you will be happy to note that there are actually shops that do this. Professional Porcelain Restoration is a course training that is offered in colleges and universities to train students in ceramic and porcelain restoration. The students are awarded certificates and diplomas and you can trust them to have the ample knowledge on restoring different materials aside from porcelain such as the majolica, ceramic, earthenware, terracotta, plaster, and clay. Anyhow, you can always find a shop that specializes in the restoration procedures that are definitely safe and worth applying to your antique porcelain collections. These professionals should be informed of the historical period of the item to be restored so as to be able to retain the surface and color patterns. Can porcelain tiles be rated for moisture absorption? There are a lot of ways on how you can tell if the porcelain tiles are best. One such yardstick is the price. There is a common thinking that the higher the price of these tiles, then the better its quality. The tile's hardness is also another measure that is used by many designers and welders in telling if one set of tile is better than the other. Now there is another factor that can be used in telling which tiles are best and which ones is not and that is through moisture absorption rate. How well can these tiles absorb water? And how much amount of water can these tiles carry before these will break and disintegrate? These are the critical questions that are being asked, and these questions are all related to the concept of moisture absorption. Together with hardness, this factor is being used right now to test the quality of these porcelain tiles. Here's a simple definition of water absorption rate. This is actually the measurement developed by the American National Standards Institute or the ANSI to see how much moisture one porcelain tile can absorb on a regular basis. This is a necessary move because there are some porcelain tiles that can easily crack after it has absorbed some water. In order to test for its rate, the testing body will oil the tiles on water and will measure the gain in the weight of the tiles and compare the current weight to the previous one before the tiles were boiled. Now there are four, four, ratings that are used to test the moisture absorption rate of these tiles and these are discussed below. I the first rating group is the non-vitreous or the low dense. These are given to porcelain tiles with absorption rate of 7% or more. I the second rating group is called the semi-vitreous, where the absorption rate is more than 3%, but should not be more than 7%. I the vitreous group. This level is called the high dense, where rate is more than 0.5%, but not greater than 3%. And finally. I the impervious group or the extremely dense tiles. These are your porcelain tiles. This function is also related to the suitability of the targeted tiles for a number of applications, whether for exterior or for interior applications. 
The general ruling and the proper selecting of tiles based on this rate is as follows. I if the tiles that are targeted are to be used for exterior projects, then it should be remembered that the tiles that should be selected are those with low water absorption rate. This is especially true in areas bombarded by rain and snow. I and if the rate is low, then these tiles may absorb typical stains in a lesser manner. Majority of the porcelain tiles are part of the third group, and the group that will not absorb those stains easily. Now you know the reason why these types of tiles are sought after and very much in demand in the market. Cleaning Porcelain Tile Flooring Porcelain is a material that is preferred by many homeowners for flooring because of its easy-to-clean properties. Keep in mind, though that this doesn't mean regular cleaning isn't an option. Porcelain is still susceptible to wear and tear, and it'll be a waste if the beauty of the material is not allowed to accentuate your home. Porcelain flooring come in three types, polished, unpolished and textured. Each one has its own unique properties that require a specific cleaning method to keep it free from dirt. The following is a breakdown of all porcelain flooring types and the preferred cleaning method for each. Cleaning Polish Porcelain Flooring Sweep the dust off the floor using an untreated dry dust mop. Don't use the broom for it can damage the polish from the porcelain tile. Pour a quarter of cleaning solution in a bucket, add hot water and stir the solution briskly. Dip the dry dust mop inside the bucket and sweep the surface of the porcelain flooring that needs cleaning. Once you have applied the solution evenly on the surface, wipe it using a clean rag until there's no sign of lather from the porcelain flooring. Do the same procedure for the whole expanse of the porcelain flooring. Cleaning Unpolished Porcelain Flooring Relocate your furniture to a different location in the house in order to prevent any hindrances in cleaning. Mix some non-bleach cleaning solution with hot water inside a bucket. Using a mop, apply the solution evenly on the unpolished porcelain flooring. Leave the solution for 5 to 10 minutes, but don't leave it to dry. Wipe the solution with a clean soft brush then sweep it again with the mop using just plain water this time. Remember to start with small areas to ensure that the cleaning is progressive. Repeat the procedure on the remaining areas, and then leave them to dry. Cleaning Textured Porcelain Flooring This type of flooring requires more vigorous cleaning because of its ripples and bumps. The first thing to do is to sweep and vacuum the floor to get rid of dust and grit. Sweep or vacuum the floor in two directions to ensure thorough cleaning. Once that's been taken care of, mix a detergent solution or any kind of neutral solution with hot water and wipe the floor with a mixture using a hard bristled brush, use a soft bristled one for non-durable tiles. Leave the solution for 5 to 10 minutes then dab the flooring with a napkin and pat them until it becomes dry. Additional tips for general cleaning and maintenance. As with any floor surface, additional precautions and regular cleaning have to be administered to keep it looking shiny and pleasing to look at. Here are the supplementary tips on caring for porcelain tile flooring. I do not allow people wearing dirty shoes to step on the tiles. I do not use ammonia-based cleaning solutions or cleaners with bleach or acidic properties or they could damage the porcelain tiles. I sweep the floor or vacuum it at least twice a week. I place a rug outside the door to prevent grit from being carried over to the porcelain tile flooring.
fused in earth and fire, making porcelain tiles. Earth resources fused with fire This is how many experts and industry insiders describe the making of porcelain tiles. The making of these tiles may seem simple at the surface, but upon closer inspection it will be revealed that there are a lot of things going on in the making of these types of tiles. For those interested in knowing the process, presented below are the simplified steps in making these amazing porcelain tiles pieces. I the step one in the manufacturing cycle of these products is all about the sourcing of the main materials to be used. This step involves the mining of the raw materials needed in making these tiles. In making these tiles, the most common raw materials used are the clay and other minerals. I the second step in the process is the blending of all raw materials. The clay and the mineral mixture are then blended together, and the result is the powdered form of these two raw materials. Once the semi-fine powder materials are present, water is then introduced into the mixture to get into that mud-like texture. The resulting muddy element is then transferred into the large dryer, and the end result will be the fine clay powder. The consistency for this powder is nice all fine and warm. By the moment the material is ready, then this is the time that the clay material is then made and formed into different sizes, often in squares as most tiles do come in that size. Manufacturers label the products at this stage as the green tiles. Other than the step or the pressing step, there is another process that may happen to the powder material. This process is called the extrusion method and can be performed in lieu of the pressing of clay powder. The tiles that are produced using this process are made by pushing the clay to the mold in order to be shaped into desired forms. Though this is an option for many tile manufacturers, still the preferred way of making tiles is through the pressing process. Once the extrusion or the pressing has been made, then these tiles are then dried in order to drain these tiles of the extra moisture. I the step 4 in the manufacturing process is the glazing of course for tiles that are glazed. For the glazing part, the initial step is to prepare the glazed liquid using a glass derivative known as the frit in the dyes. Once the mix is ready, then the mix is poured on the surface of these tiles. This glaze should be applied in high pressure and can be sprayed or can be poured directly on the surface of the tiles. I and the last step in the making of these tiles is the introduction of heat into the tiles heat that can reach almost 2000 Fahrenheit. Tiles can be fired once or twice depending on the demand of the market. These are the major processes in making tiles and the basis for porcelain tiles. The differences between ordinary tiles and the porcelain include the facts that porcelain tiles are known for its 50% feldspar content and that these are fired at a higher temperature. Get to know the variety of uses of porcelains. A quick look at its origin. Time and again, porcelains are often connected to the Chinese culture. In fact, its discovery can be traced back to China's Tang Dynasty in the 618 to 907 AD. The development of which did not push through at once though. The reason behind was because of the high temperature that was required for the ceramic materials to be fired. Two clay substances that were contained include the kaolin and pedants which is only found in China. And because of this fact, the porcelain items are commonly addressed today as Ichinai. We all know that when we speak of porcelain, the first thing that comes to our mind is the intricately designed plate or dish, vase, figurine, and other kinds of decorative ornaments. During the Song Dynasty in China, there were royal factories that were established just for the purpose of producing porcelain pieces for the royalties in their palaces. Thereafter, the same technique began to spread to other countries, but the standard remains different when it comes to the Chinese porcelain. Even the collectors of today still consider those porcelains during the Ming and Qing dynasties as the best qualities to be fashioned in history. 
Other applications for porcelains apart from the continued production of the decorative porcelain pieces these days, it is essential not to limit the material to this line. There are a lot other uses of porcelain at this time and age. In the dental field, porcelains come useful in the forms of veneers and bridges. Because of their high resistant characteristic, they are best used to combat stains as compared to the other materials. Also, they closely resemble the properties of the set of real teeth. In the field of architecture, porcelain enamel is utilized as sheathing for the top quality building applications. Homes, office complexes, childcare centers, skyscrapers, museums, schools, and the likes use the same material both for their interiors and exteriors. Subway stations make use of porcelain for tunnel linings, and restrooms are equipped with dividers made of porcelain enamel. Commercial and residential buildings likewise utilize porcelain for bathroom, living room, bedroom, walls, and kitchen floorings. The porcelain is a favorite material because of its natural water-resistant quality. The tiles differ in styles, colors, and sizes and are known to be very durable. Homeowners truly love choosing porcelain tiles in line with home furnishing. Stoves, bathtubs, toilets, sinks, dryers, grills, water heaters, washing machines, and ovens are oftentimes coated using the porcelain enamel. The tiles are not only adorable to look at, but they also don't easily stain and scratch as well as limit moisture absorption. That goes to say that the fixtures are able to last longer and retain their beauty all the more. Overall, the uses of porcelain vary. The material is involved in all areas such as the agricultural, food production, manufacturing, petrochemical products, dentistry, and municipal wastewater facilities, to name a few. Through the decades, it is for sure that other applications will soon be developed for more uses of the porcelain materials. How to care and clean for porcelain, from coffee stains to oil stains. One of the coolest things to collect and to treasure is porcelain. They are nice to look at, and its delicate construction makes it a good addition to any living room showcase. They are more fitted to be placed on a pedestal because it's a shame if these pieces will be regularly subjected to use, abuse and to dirt. And this is the reason why many collectors and homemakers select a special place in their homes where they can store the porcelain. But no matter how careful you may be in handling these collectibles, there will be times when accidents will happen, and the porcelain pieces will get dirty. So what needs to be done, when the porcelain gets in the wrong and dirty hands? Here are some usual stains and tips on how you can address these issues. Eye coffee stains are common issues for porcelain. And when your treasured china collection gets stained by coffee, you only need to dampen the cloth with water and you need to dip this wet cloth on the baking soda. Wipe the affected surface with the use of the damp cloth. I there will be times when kids may spill fruit juices or tea on the porcelain. When this happens you need to prepare a solution that is made of one tablespoon of trisodium phosphate and a quart of hot water. Use this solution to wash the porcelain or the affected part. After this, you need to wash the porcelain once again with another solution containing 3 tablespoons of laundry bleach and a quart of water. I what to do when grease takes over the porcelain. If this happens for the porcelain, then you need to make use of a stiff bristled brush and use this to brush the affected area of the porcelain together with a strong solution of household detergent. The strong detergent by the way, should be diluted first in a gallon of hot water. This should speed up the removal of the grease. I what if the stain on the porcelain is of unknown origin and you are not too sure who made that to the porcelain? If you are faced with this, you will need to apply a stiff paste of whiting also called the calcium carbonate and add household ammonia. Once applied, you need to let the mixture stand on the surface of the porcelain for at least an hour. Once the time frame has elapsed, you should wash the affected area with soapy water. Remember that this is applicable for glazed surfaces. 
but for porous surfaces you should mix scouring powder and water, and the mixture should be used to wash the affected area. Again, let it stand for a few minutes, before brushing the stain once again. I and if an oil stain concerns you, you also need a mixture of scouring powder and water. And this mixture should be applied to the stained area. Stains will always be there, no matter how careful you are. But don't worry, you know the tricks to do when confronted with a situation every now and then. How to start a porcelain doll collection Collecting porcelain dolls has become a very popular hobby not just in the US, but also throughout the world. Who would not be enticed to own and collect these tiny, delicate and beautiful dolls in our own shelves? Dolls are definitely not just for children. Grown-ups also have this fascination towards porcelain dolls, because having these dolls transport us back to their childhood and back, when everything seems to be a lot less complicated. Seeing these dolls displayed in our homes, would definitely bring back the genuine smiles, that we once had, when we were still young. If this fascination towards porcelain dolls is just starting to brew inside of you, then why not start having a porcelain doll collection? You can use the tips below when you start shopping for these porcelain dolls. 1. Know what type of dolls to collect. Before you start buying porcelain dolls, you must know first, what type of dolls to collect. Do you want to be a hardcore collector, and have those vintage, antique dolls in your fold? Or do you simply want to collect these dolls, so that you can put them up as home decorations? There are a lot of porcelain dolls that are very popular among collectors. These include Victorian dolls, fairy dolls, oriental dolls and even baby dolls. Whatever type of porcelain doll you would wish to collect, there are certainly a lot of them, that you can find. 2. Do your research. After knowing what type of doll you will collect, you have to learn some things about these dolls. It is essential to know what constitutes a quality porcelain doll, so that your precious money will not come to waste. If you intend to collect antique and limited edition porcelain dolls, you should know where the reputable antique shops are located, so that what you'd buy are truly antique. Again, if you just want to collect these dolls to decorate your home, some little flaws can be disregarded, but serious collectors certainly must be more aware of buying a genuine antique doll. 3. Consult with the experts. Talk with the people who are experts in the field of antique doll collecting on how you can start with your collection and make it grow in the future. For instance, one mistake that a new antique doll collector often commits, is having an interest, in restoring a vintage porcelain doll. Sure, these dolls already have some signs of wear and tear, but these scratches are what make them valuable as time progresses. You should hold your horses first, and disregard any thought of doll restoration. Seek advice from the experts first, before making any alteration. 4. Go to auction sites online. The internet is one place, where you can get loads of information on collecting porcelain dolls. Go to popular auction sites such as eBay, to find out what porcelain dolls are popular among collectors. You can do some canvassing already, by comparing the prices of every doll. Porcelain bathroom tile for your bathroom walls and floors. Who doesn't want to have a bathroom, that is nothing but a place where you can relax? It always feels good to take a warm bath after such a tiring day, and a rejuvenating atmosphere exuded by your bathroom, can add to the relaxing feel you can enjoy. What more can you do to your bathroom? A favorite preference of material for bathroom walls and floors is the porcelain tile. Choosing the porcelain bathroom tiles is very ideal, especially if you intend to prolong the time served by your bathroom walls and floors. 
the ability of a home subflooring will last depending on its water absorption characteristic. Therefore, it should be carefully installed and maintained. Because of the porcelain's known ability to minimize water absorption, it is ideal to place it on the bathroom floors and walls practically, because it is an area in the home, where much water is utilized. It is due to this quality, that makes the tiles longer lasting than any other material, since they can't be easily damaged by water. The tiles come in a variety of colors and designs, and are easily matched with all kinds of bathroom decors. The porcelain tile materials of today are manufactured using an advanced technology that makes the by-product achieve the looks of marble and granite. The same means of technology make the tiles highly resistant to scratches along with wearing and tearing. More so, green homes can also use the porcelain tiles because they are recyclable and composed of only the natural products. For older homes, and into the planning stage of replacing the bathroom tiles, the porcelain make will definitely be a wise preference. As mentioned earlier, it matches perfectly with all sorts of bathroom decors, paints, and other fixtures. You can choose from an array of textures, colors, and sizes. Such idea will surely let you enjoy all the hustles and bustles of planning your new bath area. Aside from the flooring, the porcelain tiles can thus be opted for the bathroom walls and may be incorporated both indoors and outdoors. During the installation of your porcelain bathroom tiles, you should take note that its grout should be tight and small as much as possible because your aim is to limit the water absorption in the bathroom. Having a bigger grout will only prompt early cracks in the tiles. When left attended, the tiles may look dirty and dull. But when cleaning them, you should not use any kind of abrasive and strong detergent as it may just stain the surface. You just have to use water, mild detergent, and soft cloth. The market offers different ranges of the price of porcelain tiles. Different brands come in competitive prices. One consideration that you should consider is that these tiles are often more costly than any ordinary kind of vinyl tile. But remember that a higher quality product is bound to last for a longer span of time. After all, buying the right kind of bathroom tiles is an investment. Porcelain Bathroom Tile for Your Bathroom Walls and Floors Who doesn't want to have a bathroom? That is nothing but a place where you can relax. It always feels good to take a warm bath after such a tiring day, and a rejuvenating atmosphere exuded by your bathroom can add to the relaxing feel you can enjoy. What more can you do to your bathroom? A favorite preference of material for bathroom walls and floors is the porcelain tile. Choosing the porcelain bathroom tiles is very ideal, especially if you intend to prolong the time served by your bathroom walls and floors. The ability of a home subflooring will last depending on its water absorption characteristic. Therefore, it should be carefully installed and maintained. Because of the porcelain's known ability to minimize water absorption, it is ideal to place it on the bathroom floors and walls practically, because it is an area in the home where much water is utilized. It is due to this quality that makes the tiles longer lasting than any other material, since they can't be easily damaged by water. The tiles come in a variety of colors and designs, and are easily matched with all kinds of bathroom decors. The porcelain tile materials of today are manufactured using an advanced technology that makes the by-product achieve the looks of marble and granite. The same means of technology make the tiles highly resistant to scratches along with wearing and tearing. More so, green homes can also use the porcelain tiles because they are recyclable and composed of only the natural products. For older homes, and into the planning stage of replacing the bathroom tiles, the porcelain make will definitely be a wise preference. As mentioned earlier, it matches perfectly with all sorts of bathroom decors, paints, and other fixtures. You can choose from an array of textures, colors, and sizes. Such idea will surely let you enjoy all the hustles and bustles of planning your new bath area. Aside from the flooring, the porcelain tiles can thus be opted for the bathroom walls and may be incorporated both indoors and outdoors. 
during the installation of your porcelain bathroom tiles, you should take note that its grout should be tight and small as much as possible, because your aim is to limit the water absorption in the bathroom. Having a bigger grout will only prompt early cracks in the tiles. When left attended, the tiles may look dirty and dull. But when cleaning them, you should not use any kind of abrasive and strong detergent as it may just stain the surface. You just have to use water, mild detergent, and soft cloth. The market offers different ranges of the price of porcelain tiles. Different brands come in competitive prices. One consideration that you should consider is that these tiles are often more costly than any ordinary kind of vinyl tile. But remember that a higher quality product is bound to last for a longer span of time. After all, buying the right kind of bathroom tiles is an investment. Porcelain doll collecting can be good for your child. Childhood is all about learning, but for learning to become effective, one has to inject an element of fun into the process. It has long been held that enjoyable hobbies involving music, art and physical activity can help a child's brain to develop a wiring that can prove beneficial to a child as he grows. So if you are a porcelain doll collector, it might be a grand idea to incorporate into your child the hobby of porcelain doll collecting. The best age to start in developing your child's love for porcelain dolls is at two years old. Just keep in mind that you should not allow your child to handle the porcelain dolls for long periods of time. For now, settle with showing the dolls to your child and explaining the reasons why you picked the particular model for each one. It's recommended that you tell your child some stories and use the dolls as the characters. This way, the child can get a kick out of them. You have to be extra creative to maintain your child's interest in the hobby at least until he or she reaches the age of 7, by then, it's perfectly alright to allow the child to handle the dolls. It's also important that you uphold the virtue of cleanliness to a child as he or she grows up. This can be done by showing them that you make it a point to wash your hands before handling the porcelain dolls and then asking them to do the same thing showcase to them the proper way of handling the dolls, so that they'll develop the skill as they grow up. It's recommended that you choose the cheaper models for your child at first, and give them the impression that the quality of the dolls they acquire are in accordance with his or her age. This way, a cumulative association is formed in each of the child's succeeding years, helping the child identify better the value of each porcelain doll that he or she comes across. But of course, once your children are old enough, it will be up to them which types of porcelain dolls to choose for themselves. Go with them to a porcelain doll store that has a lot of choices. This should ensure that a large part of their aesthetic dimensions is tapped into. An e-shop for porcelain dolls can also be of big help since the internet gives your children the opportunity to sort through a wide range of models without the risk of accidentally breaking them. Children can develop a keen eye for detail if he really gets into the hobby. As such, their minds can be more capable of analytical thinking due to the processing of information that comes about in the appraisal of each porcelain doll that they see. And most important of all, you get to create a bond with your children while sharing the hobby with them. This just proves that the benefits of porcelain doll collecting to children far extend from the ones that involve their brain development. Porcelain tile, why you should choose it over ceramic. If your living space currently has patches of dull floorings, then perhaps this is the best time to coat them up with elegant floor coverings. You can choose from a wide array of carpets and parquet coverings, but none of them can match the durability of porcelain tiles. Homeowners prefer tiles above any other kind of floor coverings, but they are oftentimes faced with a dilemma on which type of tiles to choose. Will it be porcelain or ceramic? Both of them serve their purpose of providing your floors with beauty and strength, but there are differences between the two that makes porcelain tiles stand out from the rest.
A porcelain tile is actually a ceramic tile, but it is the better kind of ceramic tile. Let's go first with the similarities. They are both composed of the same ferrous sand materials, which are clay and quartz, combined with water. Once the tiles are formed, they are blazed in high temperatures and are sometimes glazed to end up with a smooth and shiny surface. One of the main reasons why most people prefer tiles over the other floor coverings is the feeling of cleanliness that the tiles exude when seen on the floor. This aspect, on the other hand, is also where porcelain tiles have an advantage as compared to the ceramic ones. Ceramic tiles are formed using red, brown and white clay, while most porcelain tiles are composed of only white clay. Their clay compositions explain why porcelain tiles appear cleaner and sleeker than the ceramic ones. There is a slight reddish coloration underneath the surface of a ceramic tile that is caused by the mixing of white and red clay during its formation. Apart from the difference on the appearance, the most important factor that sets a porcelain tile apart from a ceramic tile is its durability. Since porcelain tiles are composed of more highly refined and purified clay, they are denser and more moisture-resistant than ceramic tiles. As a result, porcelain tiles can endure the moisture that can be caused by extreme weather conditions. Because they are less likely to absorb moisture, the more they can protect themselves from stains. If you're the man of the house, isn't it quite a relief that you'll be spared a lot of your time from just making your floors squeaky clean? With porcelain tiles, you can simply leave them as it is, no matter how harsh the environment can be. It's not surprising that more people are now replacing their floor coverings to porcelain tiles. They are not only ideal for indoor flooring, but they are starting to become popular as an outdoor flooring as well. With their low absorption capability, porcelain tiles can definitely withstand a cold temperature outdoors. They are less likely to crack when exposed to freezing temperatures. With all of the good qualities that porcelain tiles possess, it really makes good sense to start having them as a floor covering. They are definitely more expensive as compared to ceramic tiles, but durability-wise, you'll be able to save more money in the long run. Porcelain tiles are certainly worth an investment. Porcelain veneers bring back the life to your teeth. The teeth is often stained or chipped due to a tedious activity that they perform. Oftentimes, its bad health is caused by one's lack of hygiene. But then again, you should take notice of your set of teeth. How's its condition? You know, keeping a healthy set of teeth must become a priority. You speak most of the day and people get to see how beautiful or ugly your teeth are. This must be enough to make you feel conscious. Good thing, porcelain veneers have been brought right before us. As you are aware of, a visit to the dental office should be done twice in a year to ensure that any kind of dental problem is addressed by the dentist. Cure must be immediately applied on its initial stage. Any problem with your teeth worsens when left unattended. You don't only get to suffer from pain, but also from a lot of embarrassment. With the advances in today's dental procedures, corrective measures can be instantly done to broken teeth, whether they have been caused by accidents or purely unhygienic practices. Porcelain veneers are worked up by cosmetic dentists. They are the right professionals who can correct all sorts of anomalies that your teeth are going through and make certain that you can confidently flash a smile at any time of the day. Why have the porcelain veneers? A bad-looking set of teeth can obviously affect your self-esteem. But, the installation of the, so-called porcelain veneers, can put a stop to your feeling of lowness. Broken or misshapen teeth along with other flaws can be hidden since the veneers are crafted to look exactly like that of a perfect set of pearly white teeth. In case of teeth discoloration, the porcelain type of veneers will cover up your old existing discolored teeth. 
having the veneers installed is by and large a better choice than the use of teeth whitening products. The reason is because veneers offer permanent results. You can also be assured that the materials used are durable, and thus you can say goodbye to the discoloration worries for a long stretch of decades. Another burden that you might be entertaining in your mind is that having the veneers installed involves a painful dental operation. Well, you are wrong. This is because they don't only correct the bad tooth gaps and tooth stains, but also make you forget about the fearsome dental procedures. What is the first thing to do? As soon as you have considered getting the porcelain veneers, it is best to make an appointment with a cosmetic dentist. You both have to discuss your expectations. You should likewise ask all pertinent pieces of information. The doctor will also take note of all of these and have the materials ready in the laboratory. Remember to trust only a reliable cosmetic dentist for the best results. You can check out the listings in your locale to be able to find not only a reputable dental professional, but also the best porcelain veneers that will give life to your teeth 